In this video, we will go through the ways you can support your child in their social skill development. We will go through five themes in more detail. These include who am I, mindfulness, strengths and challenges, how do I communicate, and my social networks and activities. In order for a child to understand social skills, they must first understand who they are. This can firstly involve developing empathy and recognising the emotions of others and how to respond to them. This can also involve addressing mannerisms and learning what may be considered socially unacceptable behaviour, such as grabbing, rocking, eye pressing and thumb sucking. Understanding and maintaining good body posture is also essential. You can explain to your child how this may be interpreted by others and the importance of back health. You could have an agreed cue for this, such as a tap on the shoulder. In order to understand themselves as social beings, as well as practice their social skills, role play is a great tool. Through role play, children can explore a variety of emotions and feelings, as well as experience the issues, relationships and environments that affect their world. By engaging in role play in this way, they are getting equipped with the skills to integrate socially and build meaningful relationships. The second theme focuses on mindfulness. Mindfulness activities help us to connect with ourselves so that we can connect with others, build relationships and develop good social skills. Children with a visual impairment can experience stress in relation to communication as they may find it more complex. Regular mindfulness reduces stress and allows individuals the space they need to process feel at ease and learn. You can try a mindfulness exercise that has been included in the parent handbook. The next theme focuses on children knowing both their strengths and challenges. This involves firstly understanding their visual impairment and being able to explain it to others and further knowing what helps their vision, taking care of their equipment, knowing about their strengths and challenges, learning to problem solve, managing risk taking, and being able to answer questions about their vision. This can also be supported when children understand what is happening in their environment, particularly as they may not be able to see what is taking place. This can be achieved through additional description of visual information to understand the content and the context and provide fuller access to society. You can describe what the people you meet look like what the environment around them looks like, as well as any items or objects you encounter. Through everyday activities and conversations, it is important to encourage and foster a growth mindset in your child. A growth mindset refers to the underlying beliefs people have about learning and intelligence. They believe they can improve and grow, meaning they put in more effort, leading to higher achievement. For example, when facing a challenge, encourage your child to accept constructive criticism rather than ignoring feedback or understanding that they can build on a skill over time rather than giving up if it doesn't work out the first time. The next theme looks at communication, including verbal and non-verbal communication, as well as personal space. In terms of verbal communication, it is important for a child with a visual impairment to learn to move their head towards a speaker when engaging in conversation, as well as develop listening skills, turn taking and appropriate questioning. In terms of non-verbal communication, this may involve understanding tone of voice, different sounds and what that might mean, such as yawning, sighing or slamming a door. Understanding personal space involves learning about intimate space and public space, standing at appropriate distance and ways to get people's attention, such as hand raising. Here is how you can support your child to develop their communication skills. You can model the skill by allowing the child to observe and hear how you use communication skills successfully and then have the opportunity to copy this. You can discuss with the child these communication skills and explain how adults use communication skills every day in a variety of environments. Ask your child to practice using their communication skills with everyone they can. Ask them what situations they have found difficult previously or scenarios that they anticipate being difficult, 
so that they can practice them together and build confidence. Take the time to give your child feedback on their use of communication skills. Help them to celebrate their communication successes. Reading or including stories that discuss appropriate communication skills are also a great way to teach a variety of skills and behaviours. The final theme involves social networks and activities. Firstly, making friends and initiating conversation can involve learning a range of greetings, listening for gaps in conversation, practicing appropriate ways to interject, understanding the interests of others and how to end a conversation. Once friendships develop, it is essential to maintain contacts by learning conversation skills, understanding relationships and how they are different, checking in with friends and ways of staying in touch, internet safety and the qualities of a good friend. Being part of a social network also involves the child finding their place in society. For example, sport can be a great way for children to expand their social network and activities. Sport has a wide range of benefits, including health benefits, a method of relaxation and increasing self-confidence. The most important aspect of social skill development is practicing and giving your child as many opportunities as possible to practice their skills, whether it be with family, friends or strangers. We hope that you have found this video beneficial. Please download our parent handbook, which includes more information and prompts to support the development of your child's social skills.